Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today we'll be discussing Jurassic Park, the first one. Just finished watching it for free on Tubi. Got some slim pickings on movies to watch on either Hulu or Tubi right now. I'm at the end of the month, and you know, I'm doing this for probably another month and a half. Um, probably till the end of August, and then I will probably go work at Target. So, <laughs> whatever. But, um, point being is I'll probably switch over to like, maybe like, Gotta get the National Treasures, maybe try to find if there's something on like Disney Plus, or maybe go over to um, Paramount or Peacock or something, just something with more fresh movies. Maybe back to Netflix, see what's going on there this nowadays. But regardless, you know, we do it on these ones. Overall impressions and grade, after I've given the grade, and if you've not seen the movie would like to, um, you're gonna want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. We'll be discussing the plot synopsis and character development, and any similar movies or major themes. We have reviewed. I forget if it, was, it definitely wasn't this year, but last year or 2021, we reviewed um, the newest uh, Jurassic Park, which I wasn't a huge fan of because there's just a lot. It was just pretty much just constant screeching from dinosaurs. And so I wanted to revisit the series because, again, not much else to watch, pick, and um, I do remember liking these a lot. And so this one came out, Jurassic Park, the first one. It was released originally in 1993. That's when I was originally released. <laughs> Rated PG-13, this is a sci-fi slash adventure movie, and has a runtime of 2 hours and 7 minutes. You can watch it for free on Tubi, or a Peacock subscription, or Philo subscription, whatever that is. Google says it's intense, thrilling, and engaging. It says, in Steven Spielberg's massive blockbuster, paleontologist Alan Grant, played by Sam Neill, and Ellie Sattler, played by Laura Dern, and mathematician Ian Malcolm, played by Jeff Goldblum, are among a select group chosen to tour an island theme park populated by dinosaurs created from prehistoric DNA. While the park's mastermind billionaire, John Hammond, played by Richard, At Richard Attenborough, assures everyone that the facility is safe, they find out otherwise when various ferocious predators break free and go on the hunt. Did 1.046 billies at the box office on a budget of 63? That must be the highest you know, budget to box office grossest mo grossing movie we've done. Not exactly sure. But the other big ones, 90% liked it on Google, 88% liked it on Just Watch, whatever that is, 91% liked it on Rotten Tomatoes, and 8.2 out of 10 on IMBD. And so, if I had to grade it for the first time, I'd probably give it a B plus. Rewatching it 30 years later, it's on the lower end of entertaining for me, so I'm gonna give it a B minus. I thought, um, again, just just the graphics. I mean, the and understandably, it's a 30 year old movie, but. Um, I just thought the definitely I definitely like the plot super uh, novelty to it when it, certainly when it came out you know I was a baby when it came out <laughs> um, but I remember really liking it as a as a younger kid rewatching today just lower end of entertaining I don't know just the movie just kind of aged for me so overall B minus I do recommend it especially if you've never seen the Jurassic Park series they are good movies um, so if you've not seen it would like to you're gonna shut up the video now so the movie opens up. Um, you have a couple of different places. They're in Costa Rica for a little bit, um, and then they're over here for a little bit. But basically, the opening scene is you get a Jurassic Park credit, um, like title screen, and then people are trying to load what's presumably a, definitely a dinosaur into this like cargo carrier van. And one of this this dude falls into the cage, and he's getting eaten a bunch, like eaten up. And they're like, shoot him, shoot him, and then they don't, they can't, they can't rescue him, and he gets eaten by the dinosaur. And so then you meet, um, I'm going to, again, the character cast list is 30 years old, so I'm going to mess up some of the characters. But you have a uh, lawyer who I believe is Jer Jerry Harding, I think is the character in the movie. The Gerard, Gerald R. Mullen character. Um, but regardless, there's a lawyer that goes and starts to meet with... Um, John Hammond, again, who's the guy that's founding and running the uh, Jurassic Park. And it's like, you know, all of these investors, you know, we need someone to come out. They're worried about, you know, $20 million or whatever um, investment for, you know, park safety because this person got eaten. And so you meet the lawyer, you meet John Hammond, um, and then you meet Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler, who are the two, the like, paleontologist and paleobotanist um, were scientists. And they're just uncovering a, a Tyrannosaurus, a, a, a Velociraptor skeleton somewhere in Montana, I believe. And so, you know, they're doing an excavation when a helicopter lands down and kind of blows stuff all over the place. Um, Alan is giving like a lecture to some kid who says, you know, it looks like a 10 foot turkey. 
and he has one of the uh, Velociraptor hooks or claws. And um, you meet John Hammond again. He flies down. I believe the lawyer initially meets with John or somebody else. Doesn't matter. But John kind of helps himself to Alan and Ellie's special alcohol, and he's like, you know, today is a great day to celebrate. And so Alan and Ellie, you know, they're at first like, who is this guy? Like before they know who it is. So. In the characterization, John Hammond, his name carries some weight. So once he says his name, they're like, oh, let's be friendly and respectful. And John's like, you know, I need you guys to come, you know, look up, take a tour of this park and, and, and put your name on it and vouch for it. Um, they're like, we don't know, we don't know. And he's like, you know, I'll fund your research for the next three years. And they're like, okay, where's the plane? And so they get on a helicopter, they fly, they land, um, they start getting a tour of the facility. Um, you meet Dr. Henry Wu, who I believe is he's a well-known actor. I believe SVU is kind of his biggest role that I know him from. B.D. Wong, um, like the psychiatrist on SVU. Um, but regardless, you meet the scientist. He starts telling him about these different processes of how they do this. Um, they go on a little, like, almost like a theme park ride. They watch a little video about basically they have preserved um, dinosaur DNA in amber, and they extract it and kind of splice it with frog DNA. And then they're able to incubate it and create, recreate dinosaurs. And so Alan and Ellie, you know, are, are dumbfounded. They initially see a big, I don't know, stone dinosaurs, big long neck dinosaur thing. And so um, you go on this little ride. They see this little animation. They meet Dr. Henry Wu. Um, Ian Malcolm is with them as well. A, a Jeff Goldblum character. He's like a mathematician guy. He's rambling on about chaos theory or some nonsense. Um, but regardless. Then you have kind of like the, the team of Jurassic Park, and John Hammond's running it. Um, his grandchildren, Lex Murphy and Tim Murphy, are there. You have Dr. Henry Wu, the scientist. Ray Arnold is, I think that's a Samuel Jackson character. Yes, it is. He's like a technician. Um, Dennis Nedry is kind of like the main uh, science technician guy. Um, again, Jerry Harding is the lawyer. And then Juanito Ro Rosta something, I believe. I believe that's the character. I'm like a 30 year old character list. But there's also like a, like another, like a head kind of like dinosaur caretaker guy that's, you know, talks about there's been, you know, they bred nine velociraptors and then the, the biggest one killed most of them. So there's like three velociraptors total, but there's another character of you know, like the main park animal caretaker guy. And so they basically say, you know, uh, Ian gets, you know, kind of skeptical. He's like, you know, why aren't they just going to start reproducing in the wild? And Doc Henry Wu's like, no, you know, we've engineered them to all be female. And so that sets up some premonition for later. Um, but regardless, they get a tour of the facility. Um, they, have, they have dinner, and they're all kind of skeptical. Al and Ellie and uh, Ray, or um, Ian are all skeptical. And the lawyer, Jerry Harding, is like, you know, we can charge so much money for this. We're definitely, I'm really going to like this. And so the lawyer's the one that likes it. All the scientists are kind of skeptical that this isn't going to work. Um, but regardless, the next day they're going to go out on their tour. So the next day shows up. They have these cars that are just like on a, like on a like a streetcar you know track that takes them around the park, and you look at different dinosaurs. So they in there. Um, Tim is I don't know seven years old. Lex is I don't know she's female. She is I don't know twelve. And so Tim is really you know talkative, talk talkative. And Alan uh, kind of wants them in the other car. So they have two cars. You have Alan, Ellie, and Ian in one. And then you have Lex, Tim, and the lawyer, Jerry, in the other. And so they start going through. They, they're supposed to see this one dinosaur doesn't show up at all. They can't see it. They go to the next to the T-Rex where the T-Rex is supposed to be. Still don't see it at all. Ian Malcolm's like tapping on the screen like, where is these dinosaurs at? So they uh, raise up a goat. And the goat still doesn't attract the T-Rex, and then um, they start they start carrying on for, for a little bit forward, and then they get out of their car and they start. There's another like park ranger there, and there's a I don't know Stegosaurus, one of the big like maned things with like a big like horn. Um, it's sick, and so they're trying to investigate why it's sick. Um, they think it. Uh, Ellie hypothesizes that it is something that. Um, is these berries that it's eating so they find a big pile of dung they dig through it and they don't see the evidence of the berries and so back at the headquarters they are worried about a storm that is approaching um, as well as Dennis's character before these scenes even he meets with somebody else a big basically a covert dude 
and he's clearly trying to sell the embryos of the different dinosaurs on the black market and make money for himself. And so that's Dennis's uh, prerogative throughout the movie. And so this, they're worried about the storm, they try to call him back. And so Ellie wants to stay with the, again, I believe it's Juanito, or just one of the, the main caretaker of the animals. Um, they have like a gas power jeep, and then for the rest of the people to, to move on. So now you have Ian and Alan in a car, and then Lex, Tim, and Jerry still in a car. And so the, the, the kid continue on the little track line, starting to head back. When Dennis decides uh, now's the time to steal the embryos, and to do so, it's like shut down the systems, and he blocks it with like a just a computer program. So he shuts down the system for a little bit and tells him that it's normal as it's, as he goes to steal the embryos. And then, um, for whatever reason, uh, when the 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 system is down, the storm hits or something, and basically the power's out for good now. And Dennis needs to take these. Uh, embryos to go meet with somebody at some gate in the park and so he's driving it's now raining very heavily um, his car is stuck in the mud he gets out of the mud to um, to like pull himself out but the since the power is down all the dinosaurs are enclosed with an electric fence and um, the and now the, the, the electricity is down so the, the dinosaurs can kind of break out and so it's raining very heavily, he ties his tow rope um, to a tree, and he meets one of these dinosaurs that spits ink. And so he's like, you know, this is a, you're not too scary, and then spits ink in his face, spits ink in his face again. He's kind of frantically running, he drops the, the embryos that he had stored in like a, like a shaving cream can. And um, they just show it rolling down the hill and going to waste in the mud. And then he gets mauled to death, you know, it's PG-13, but he gets mauled to death by this thing that spits ink in his face. And so, uh, Dennis is dead. Um, the main, the Ray, the Samuel Jackson, and John Hammond are trying to figure out how to get the or get the power back on. And Ray's heavily against restarting the whole system, and John wants to restart the whole system. And so now back out in the park, Alan and the two cars get a, basically get they see the the water vibrating, which is a that's a major theme is watching vibration of water to communicate, which is. You know how they indicate the dinosaurs are coming. Um, that's because it's momentum, not light. But uh, the 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 T Rex, they see the goat. They're back in the T Rex enclosure when the thing shuts down. The power shuts off, and then they see the goat has been eaten. And so Tim is like, "Where's the goat?" And like a big chunk of its leg like flans on the windshield, and then you see the T Rex, you know, gulping it down. So now they're freaking out, and they're like, you know, stay calm. Noise and movement attracts them. Alan and Ian, you know, the two adults in one car are able to stay calm, the kids are not. And so the lawyer, Jerry, he freaks out and just starts running. And he goes to this outhouse in the bathroom. And so he's sitting on the john. Um, the T-Rex gets attracted to Lex is freaking out and she turns on a flashlight. And so he gets attracted to that car. Um, and they're freaking out. And so uh, I, I believe the... Um, then Alan and Ian both get out of the car and start waving flares to try to save the kids. Um, and the uh, T-Rex starts chasing Ian. He you know, crashes through the, the outhouse where the guys, the lawyer's taking a, go, take, go to the bathroom. And he eats that guy, so Jerry is now dead. Um, uh, Ian gets injured. It's, I don't know if I missed the scene. It's not clear exactly how he gets injured, but I think he just trips on something. But he injures his leg. Um, John and, uh, and, or Alan, Lex, and Tim, they get, they're in this car, or at least, um, him and, him and, uh, Tim are, or, I don't know, I heard, it doesn't really matter, but basically the car gets pushed over the edge, they're swinging on the, on the edge, um, Lex and Alan are able to swing to the side and grab a rope, Tim is still in the car, the car lands in this tree, Alan's able to climb up into the tree and get him out of the tree. And they have Alan, Lex, and Tim without any vehicles trying to make their way back to the, to the, head of the, to the front of the park. And so um, they sleep in a tree one night. They see some more, I don't know, herbivore stegosaurus, those big long neck things that he, he uh, plants. While um, uh, John Hammond asks, uh, I think it's Juanito, to go out and rescue his grandkids. And Ellie Sattler's like, I'm going to go with you. So they go out there. They find... Um, Alan injured, they're able to rescue him, they get chased by a T-Rex, and then they make, they make it back to the front, um, or with John Hammond and Ray Arnold's, like, area. 
And so now the next day, Walt wakes up, Alan, Ellie, or Alan, Lex, and Tim are in the tree. They get down from the tree. They start moving along. They get chased by a pack of um, other type of dinosaurs. And they have to hide under like, this big log as they run over them. Um, then they make it to this fence, uh, an electric fence, and you know, uh, Alan like tests it with a stick, which wouldn't do anything, I don't think. But um, regardless, uh, touches it and acts like he's being electrocuted, freaks out Tim and Lex, um, and then they decide that they have to climb over the fence. So they're starting to climb the fence, and now they're building tension in the in the script because now um, Ali Sattler has gone. She's volunteered to go to this other little control panel and try to turn the power back on. And so she she runs over there. She goes through some steps with John over a, a walkie-talkie or you know some sort of communications channel. And right as she's tur she turns on the power, and right as she's turning on the power, um, Ellie and Alan have made it over the um, the electric fence, and uh, Tim is still kind of scared and nervous, trying to climb down. Ellie turns on the on the on the power, and it, it electrocutes Tim off of the off of the electric fence. Didn't didn't look it up at ten thousand volts. I'm pretty sure it just kill you. But regardless, Tim get, get Alan performs CPR on Tim and is able to revive him. And so a little scare there, but now Ellie, right as she turns on the power, she's going to like leave or whatever, and there's a velociraptor right there trying to eat her through like this back paneling. And so she's, she goes to the other side of the room, an arm reaches out over to her, she thinks it's John, and it's just this, this just an arm that's just decap or you know severed from the severed from the rest of the body. And so she is able to trap one of the um, one of the velociraptors in this little room, and she makes it back to where John and Ray are as well. So maybe it was Ray who got eaten because I don't think you see Ray get saved. I don't think I don't think Ray is alive at the end of the movie. But regardless, um, so now they get they get back. Ellie's back there. Alan and um, Lex and Tim make it back to the the central place and they sit down to eat and to relax for a bit. And Alan, Ellie, and um, Ian and John are kind of like brainstorming of what to do to reset this. Or again, they already reset the system, but now. Um, Tim and Lex, they see another, they think they're out of danger for you know, a brief second, and then they see the, the silhouette of a velociraptor creeping around in like the, you know, it's a big kind of like banquet area or big like a hotel lobby type of space. And so they run into the, to the kitchen. Um, the, the adults are kind of close by, but into a different room. Um, and so they have a kitchen scene where they're, you know, scurrying around in this kitchen trying to dodge two velociraptors. Um, they're, a, they're able to do so. Um, they lock, kind of lock, I think lock one of them into a room as well, but they, they, then they get back out to the main area outside of the kitchen, and they meet back up with, uh, Alan has a, a shotgun, but they meet back up with the adults. And so, the Velociraptors break out of the kitchen, and they run into this room, and they try to, their best to, to lock it down. And so you have Alan and Ellie both holding the door as the Velociraptors trying to break in. And Lex, in her characterization, she's good with computers, so she's able to, you know, navigate the the Linux system and find the the automatic, you know, they have a security system where it like, puts big steel reinforcements to lock the doors. So another tense scene there. They're able to um, officially lock the doors, um, but then another brief moment of relief, and then the, the Velociraptors can just break through the glass. So that, didn't, that wasn't super convincing either because the Velociraptors look a lot bigger than a little s circular area on, 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 a, on a door. But regardless, that's what happens. Again, at this point, Juanito has also been killed um, when Ellie is running back or to and, to, to and fro from, the, uh, from this little outhouse place. One of the uh, Velociraptors is able to sneak up on Juanito and, eat, and eats him. And so now that's going on. Again, you don't hear from Dr. Henry Wu anymore. Um, but they're back in the main like, visitor center, and the two Velociraptors are kind of cornering them. They're not really sure what to do. Um, they had escaped. They escaped like the top area from like jumping on like museum pieces, like things hanging from the ceiling, and able to hold onto that and some more action sequences from that. Um, but as the Velociraptors are surrounding them, the uh, T-Rex comes in and eats one of the Velociraptors and takes the other Velociraptor's attention over to him. And so now the humans are able to escape, they get into a car, and they're able to make it to the helicopter. And then the resolution of the, of the movie is 
But again, in that little scene as they're escaping, Alan's like, you know, I can't, John, I can't endorse your partner. John's like, yeah, I can't either. But they get on the helicopter, you know, they're all safe now, and they're able to head off to the mainland. So the resolution of the scene is them flying away from this Jurassic Park island, and they're all kind of safe and just resting. So overall, again, when it came out, it was certainly a big hit. I mean, the highest grossing movie we've done. Um, maybe not, maybe not in terms of like overall, like if I watched Top Gun the first weekend or Avatar the first weekend, I don't really know the ending numbers, and I might have covered it in the language litigation and integration series. But definitely, definitely a, a big cultural hit for sure. And again, I'm running out, running slim on the movies to review. So I'll probably do the, at least Jurassic Park 2 and 3 as well. And we already did the, mo the newest one, which was just way too much dinosaur screeching for me. And so overall, lower end of uh, entertaining. Certainly when it came out, it would have been a higher rating as well. And so major themes, I did like the, the vibration of the water as indication of measurement, which, yeah, solved the measurement problem of quantum mechanics a solid seven years now, and nothing is, not, Brad, not, not a conference, not, a, not a anything, not payment, not a job, just, just act like he does not exist. And call him a threat when a grown man wants to collect his property and will never have a career or family because of it. Oh well, another movie review. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.